Well, we'll get started. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Joy Brown, founder of Culture Creators, and today we're hosting a really great interactive workshop called um, The Small Business Playbook, and it's being presented by the Full Screen Agency. We have four super talented executives um, in the advertising and marketing world who are going to bring to you real hands-on tactical strategy for building and growing your business in the social media space. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce to you the four speakers for today. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping. We're asking everyone to please keep your phones on mute. We will have, um, you will have an opportunity for questions. You can feel free to put your questions in the chat section. Um, the uh, host will be going through the chat section and will pull out questions to answer. Um, and so uh, please feel free to do so. Um, and if you're going to be on social media, please feel free to um, tag us and the hashtag is culture creators and the at um, our Instagram account is at the culture creators. And once again, I want to thank our partners, our full screen for bringing this very important information to you. Cause as we know, uh, social media is one of the most important ways to reach your audiences and your customers. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Karan Brown. Karan is an SVP and group director of client services for full service. Karan is a marketing advertising change agent with over 18 years of working with top brands such as AT&T, Universal Pictures, and Wells Fargo. She, is, she, leads a she leads a team of 75 social and content marketing professionals and they work alongside, alongside brands to drive and amplify culture. Our next speaker is Ashley Carr. She is the Associate Director of Strategy. She is, uh, at her time in the company, she's led strategy with brands like Twitch, AT&T, Mary Kay, Disney, and more. Um, and prim, prim, prior to full screen, Ashley sunk her teeth into the agency circuit with time at Mullen Low, Ogilvy, and a few startup touching brands like California Avocados, TBS's American Dad, Family Guy, Bowles, and more. Then we have Crystal Capella Colon, Senior Director of Strategy. She is on a team with over eight years of experience in social media marketing. Having been with Full Screen for the last five years, she has overseen the development of research, measurement, and social strategy for leading brands like Disney, Hard Rock Cafe, American Girl, Timberland, and more. Crystal is skilled at telling stories built from data to help direct clients' marketing strategies and was recently recognized as a Synopsis Rising Star honoree. Then we have our guy, one of the guys, Ben Arnold. He's a Senior Director of Paid Media. Ben um, and his team build innovative media strategies that help brands drive conversation, engagement, and sales across major social platforms. And prior to his current role, Ben oversaw business operations for an ad tech company, Giant Media, where he led go-to-market strategy, marketing, and client services. So once again, I want to thank you guys for joining us today, and please meet our, our host for the, the day, um, Karan Brown. Thank you guys so much. You could have been anywhere on this Friday, but you are here with us. So good morning to my West Coast people. Um, good afternoon to those on the East Coast. And I am so excited to still keep hearing that doorbell because that means that there are still people coming in wanting to um, get their business right. So we are full screen, uh, as Joy said. Joy, thank you for that warm introduction. And full screen is a Warner Media company, right? So we are part of this uh, large AT&T conglomerate. But I like to say that we're the young, fun, agile, um, kind of little sister of a company, you know, part of Warner Media. So we have our roots in talent. About 10 years ago, full screen started as an MCN representing talent. We currently represent about 2,500 creators, primarily in uh, the YouTube space. We help them monetize. But then business shifted into kind of a three-pronged approach, if you will, that encapsulates everything that a production company is, everything that a social um, agency is, and everything that a strategy 
consultancy is. So we're bringing it all together under one roof and we have a very uh, unique company in full screen. All right, and uh, so we're definitely passionate at full screen about growing audiences, about driving culture, and about helping brands and talented creators generate revenue within social. Uh, Joy gave a really warm welcome and introduction to all of my colleagues here, so I'm not going to go in depth about their background again, but just know that we pride ourselves at full screen on taking a very human approach. So while people have this uh, title behind their names, while they work in certain departments and certain divisions and wear certain hats, when those hats need to come off and when we need to pivot and when we need to be human and when we need to connect with other people, we do so. And that is exactly why um, my colleagues are here today. And I thank you guys so much for sharing your knowledge with everyone. So really more specifically, if we're gonna keep it all the way real, why are we really here today talking about this? And it's because three months ago, life happened. And life happened to all of us at the same time around the world. It was such a unique uh, time where all of a sudden with the pandemic, the world as we knew it was upended and people had to figure out a new way of being immediately full screen jumped into action and created what we call the small business playbook. We knew that the people that were going to get hit the hardest were those small business owners that couldn't as quickly access that PPP money that the government, you know, put out and then the large corporations kind of uh, ate up, but that's a, a seminar for another day. We knew that people who were reliant on brick and mortar, or reliant on selling face-to-face -face and in close proximity were going to be hit very hard. Everyone that had put off becoming digitally um, and bolstering their social prowess was going to be left in the dust if they weren't able to pivot very quickly. So we created a step-by-step -step social media playbook in order to provide the tools to let those small business owners start to um, walk down the path of standing up their business and social. And then I would be remiss if I didn't then layer on the activities that have happened in the past month on top of the pandemic, on top of the economic downturn in the country, we then are in a heightened period um, of social justice reform that was very much needed, that is very much uh, calling America to the mat and is making us kind of put a lens on ourselves and turn the mirror on ourselves and say, how do we all want to be as a country, as companies, as individuals? <clears throat> and if we're going to put action to what a lot of companies are talking about, then we not need to start taking things directly to the people. So I do not want to take any more time. I want to get right to the meat of all of this great information. And I know that there are some of you that have pen and paper ready and you want to follow along because this will be a working style session. That's great for people that just want to listen and digest. Know that we will also be sending out a link to the larger uh, social media playbook that's chock full of great and amazing things, even things like templates that you can download and use uh, right on social. So um, at the end of each section, we're going to pause and stop and take questions and talk through it. So please, um, we're here to help you all. So let's make this interactive and let's have fun. I'm going to pass it to Crystal, who's going to start us off. Awesome. Thank you, Karan. Uh, so as Karan mentioned, operating a business today with COVID-19 implications has taken on a new set of responsibilities and businesses are adapting to a new state of normal for consumers with things like shifting their production from what was once uh, core retail or alcoholic distributors. Um, they're doing things now like making sanitizers or selling face masks. Um, contactless efforts are also in the works with things like uh, delivery services or just businesses in general finding new ways to get their products into the hands of their customers. And businesses are also having to find uh, social media as a new tool to do things that they aren't able to do in person anymore. 
And social media has always been important in the last decade. It has become increasingly important for businesses to have a social presence. Not only um, does it make brands more accessible to consumers, but it helps build trust and can serve as a learning tool for larger campaigns and can aid in boosting sales, as we all know. And right now it's critical. More time inside has meant more time online with 82% of millennial consumers agreeing that businesses need to change how they're advertising directly in response to COVID-19. Of the many wonderful things social media can do, um, let's keep in mind that it can help drive awareness to reach new audiences organically or through paid media. It can help drive consideration, generating positive sentiment by encouraging customers to engage with your business online. And it can be a, com a conversion tool, driving customers to order from your website or buy directly through social platforms themselves. And it also gives customers a way to help, as I'm sure we've all seen over the last few months in particular. Consumers are eager to show their support for small businesses, especially within their own communities. They're reposting helpful tips from those that they've seen or that they feel passionately for, and they're looking for new ways to support small businesses in general. I know I myself have been ordering delivery a bunch more and also have chosen to purchase gift cards for businesses that I might not need products for right now, but could use later on. So let's talk strategy. Uh, we'll be covering eight sections today. And as Karan mentioned, we'll be sending out a link afterwards. So you'll have everything in writing. Um, but to start, we'll talk about audiences and then move on to competitors and how to find your competitive positioning. We'll talk a little bit about developing your tone. Uh, we'll dive into platforms and understand which platforms or what platform is best for your needs. We'll talk about creative. And as Karan mentioned, we do have some templates that will be included in that link as follows. Follow up. We'll talk about building community in a few different ways online, uh, some paid tactics and tools that you can use as you start to think about broadening your reach with consumers online, and last but not least, how to measure your success, which is such an important part of um, the overall landscape in making sure you're doing your due diligence and driving uh, your objectives forward. And to keep it fun, we have also developed an imaginary small business, <laughs> once upon a donut shop. Um, and so we'll take you through each of the sections to sort of put application uh, in, in an exercise to bring it to life through this small business so you can see how everything comes together. Once Upon a Donut Shop, just to kind of set the stage, is an imaginary donut shop made up from an imaginary town in glazed California, let's say. Um, and they uh, have been in business for about five years. They are known for their unicorn donut, as you can see here. I personally would love a donut right now after looking at this image, hopefully you guys do too. Um, they're a favorite of kids and adults and they are delicious as they are cute, the donuts that is, and they've been a late night spot, but because of COVID, they've had to shift some of their uh, ways to connect with consumers. So step one. The first thing we'll talk about and dive into is identifying your social audience. And before you do anything, you really wanna think about who your ideal social media audience is. And these are the people that you want to see and um, that you want interacting with your content online. Um, they're the people that you want to be buying your products or your um, service. And it can be as broad as a generation or as specific as men age 22 to 27 who live in a specific state or or region. Um, and really making sure you identify your target audience is the first step in getting to know their purchase behaviors and some of their preferences, as well as where they like to spend their time on social. And good morning. Uh, I see someone joined us from Dallas. So throughout each section, you'll notice these how-to sort of um, slides and what they're meant to be is really an exercise. So whether you do it now or you do it after, I would encourage you to refer back to these how-to slides to sort of put it into action for your own brand or business. And for the purpose of social, social audience identification, um, the things that you'll want to consider and how you'll go about this is first, um, identifying who's buying your product or service. So how old are they? What are, um, what life stage are they at? Are they single? Do they have kids? Are they just out of college? 
Uh, second, do you want to keep growing this audience or do you want to reach a new audience? And that's a big thing, right? Because you could be appealing to a certain type of customer that isn't who you want to be appealing to. So you need to think about whether or not you want to keep going down a path of reaching the same individuals you have been or start to think about a new audience and what their needs are. Speaking of needs, you need to figure out what they are. <laughs> so why would they turn to your small business over a large one or to one of your competitors? Um, what are their social habits? Where do they like spending their time online? What are their favorite social platforms? What are their favorite um, behaviors and how do they go about engaging with others on each platform and with uh, brands? And we do get into a bit of that later on. And then last but not least, you'll want to meet them where it counts. And understanding your ideal social audience will help you uh, be able to create social content that will resonate with them on a deeper level. All right, so looking at Once Upon a Donut Shop, um, before the shutdown, they saw a lot of families and children coming into their shop, but since COVID has sort of changed the way that people can come in, they don't really have the space for folks to be gathering in their shop. Um, they are right now going after, after um, millennials, you know, it's, it's family, but they want to kind of broaden that audience into millennials so they can be appealing to new individuals in addition to who they previously were. And before I move on to step two, does anyone have any questions? I do, this is Joy. So how can, how, what tools are there to identify our audience? What if we don't know who our audience is? Yeah, that's a great question. I think it's important to first think about who, um, outside of tools to helping you identify your target audience, think about um, who the individual is that you'd like to meet, meaning what, what's the product that you're offering and what's the service that you have and who is that most likely going to appeal to? Do you want to be selling to um, millennials who might have the cash in hand to buy into your business or your service? Or would you rather be going after a Gen Z who may have a lower income but can really buy into your brand and help drive affinity or um, positive sentiment for you. That's step one. Um, step two would be thinking about where those individuals spend their time on social media. And fortunately, we have a lot of insight into each of the generation generational preferences on where they like to spend their, their time on social. Um, a little bit here from what you'll hear from us today, but also in the, in the follow-up. Awesome. Okay, so step two, finding your competitive positioning. Uh, before you develop a social persona, it's important to understand how your competitors are approaching the same audience and with what message. So once you have a good understanding of the competitive landscape, it's time to identify your competitive positioning. And this will help you create content that feels true and authentic to your business and your business alone. Uh, this positioning could even be the reason you started your business to begin with because you saw an opportunity in an area that had yet to be explored by someone else. So moving into the next how-to, to build your competitive analysis, we've narrowed it down to six important steps. The first being identify who of your competitors have social. Um, if your competitors don't have social channels, you'll have the opportunity to really lead in the space. Step two, understand where they're active. So what channels are they prioritizing? What platforms are they posting the most content to? Which platforms are they getting the most engagements on, like uh, comments and shares and likes? Step three, consider your competitor's posting cadence. So are they posting content daily or weekly? Are they posting content bi-weekly? Is it working for them? Do you feel like the content they're posting is generating a lot of engagements or is it kind of leveling out the more they post? Step four, figure out what their social goal is. So what messaging are they learning, are they leaning heavily towards? Um, are their posts looking to drive sales by linking to their website or are they using things like shoppable tags on Instagram where users can click directly on the photo and see the products available? Step five, evaluate their content. So take a look at their posts and see what works for them. 
try to get a sense for whether or not you like the creative and if you feel like it's helping them reach their goal. And last but not least, take note of any taglines or hashtags being used. A lot of times a business uh, tagline is indicative of how they view their competitive positioning. So by clicking on their most used hashtags, especially if they're hashtags that that business created, you can identify if and how customers are talking about the business. Okay, so as a step two, you want to build your specific competitive positioning. So first, think about the unique things your business can offer. Is your product or service uh, that you're offering completely unique to the landscape? Are you the only business that offers this in your area? Step two, know how your business can satisfy customer needs. Why would customers be compelled to frequent your business or want to buy your service? What can your business provide to customers that competitors can't? Uh, third, know if any of your competitors share similar messaging. So, um, for example, if there are two businesses in a city of chains, you could also leverage the fact that you get to know each customer on a personal level. So you just want to think about how you can kind of diversify your messaging. And last but not least, identify how you would communicate that in one sentence. And I think this might be the hardest thing for all of us to do, whether we're doing it for a small business or for a large scale brand. It is really imperative though, to think about all of your offerings and that unique thing that you can do and, and summarize that in one sentence. And so let's bring this to life. <laughs> Get a good example through Once Upon a Donut Shop. Um, so looking at the competitor positioning for Once Upon a Donut Shop, all of the donut competitors in their community, um, of all of them, only two are active on social and they both only use Facebook. So the first competitor is posting daily, but they're really only highlighting the donut of the day. They use one main hashtag, classic and fresh, but they get minimal engagement. The second competitor is not active on social, but their last post was with a creator who taste tested their donuts through a Facebook Live. So a really smart and fun way to kind of reach consumers in a way that might be more interesting or appealing to them. Uh, the takeaway here is that there's room for Once Upon a Donut Shop to lead on social through personalized messaging. So again, it's all about making it your own, um, making sure you set yourself apart from competitors. So looking at the competitive positioning, Once Upon a Donut Shop is unique because they have innovative flavors and designs that change weekly. It's the newest donut shop in town and they've picked up steam due to the unicorn donut that we saw earlier on. The other donut shops only offer classic flavors with little to no design and Once Upon a Donut Shop has the ability to create personalized donuts for parties or gatherings or individuals and so their positioning in one sentence is donuts with character and personality. Something new just for you from eight to two. Sort of like a punchy tagline. And before we move into step three, does anyone have any immediate questions? And we can always circle back if something comes to mind later on. Yeah, I have a question. How would awesome. you um, essentially identify your competitive positioning in a landscape as like, uh, what's the word, erratic as like, uh, subjective artists like designers and like visual artists yeah that's a great question i as an individual more on the art side of things i would say look to the individuals that you know or um that you would almost aspire to want to become think about who's doing really well in your category and how they're actively posting social content on um on social media so rather than looking at it from a business perspective it can be from an individual side I would also say that as an artist, your competitive positioning is a little bit more of like your unique art style. So say you're doing something that's completely new and innovative, that can kind of serve as your com competitive positioning instead of having like a sentence or something. It may be more of a visual thing for you yeah. specifically. That's a good call out, Ash. And if I can just add one more thing on top of that, right, we're making, for the sake of our example, we've made kind of a wide open lane with the donut shops. Um, competitor A was here, competitor B was here, and we found a middle lane. But we know that in real life, things are going to be a lot more crowded. So you are just looking for a slight nuanced way 
to differentiate yourself. And oftentimes, um, as Crystal said, you can look to people that uh, you admire, you aspire to be like, and that you want to emulate. And even of that person that you love, there's something about them or there's um, one of their philosophies or their process or approach to something that you could probably either add on to or flip on its head. Yep. And that could be your differentiator. Exactly. Awesome. So I think Ebony had a question. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um hi. So with having uh for example, let's say we're having a wide target audience, like you said, you were having uh not only you were trying to get families, but now you're trying to get millennials. So how is it um on social media, how is the I guess the, the uniqueness different, you know, with with getting different target audience? Do we uh, stick to just one audience when we're using a specific platform or should we our uniqueness be catering to every um, piece of our target audience so let's say if part of it is uh, teenagers and part of it is you know 40 year old females you know are we specifically in every post trying to target a different part of our audience or are we generalizing it to make sure that it kind of fits everybody in a sense? That's an awesome question <laughs> with so many um, ways to approach it and answers. I would say one thing that we often do with brands and small businesses is to think about your primary target and then your secondary target. So it's better if you can hone in on one versus trying to reach everyone at everywhere. Um, once you've identified your primary versus secondary, think about the platforms and this, the value that they provide and what objectives you can accomplish on each. And Ashley's going to talk about that in a little bit, so I won't steal her thunder. Um, but with platforms like Facebook, um, when you think about things as simple as Facebook allowing, Facebook or Twitter, I should say, allowing you to include links and URLs, that can ultimately help you drive clicks if you're trying to push people to your website, whereas Instagram is really great at driving engagement and can help be more of a, um, a brand booster on the affinity side. Um, so thinking about those types of things can help you narrow in on who to target where and how. Yeah, I have a quick question. Um, sorry. Uh, the first question would be for a company or a startup that already has started their social media strategy and then looking at this advice and trying to redefine their audience, would you advise for people to switch on their social media strategy like in the middle of, them, of their work? And then the second question is pertaining to the primary versus secondary um, target. And I wanted to know if there's ever any cases where the primary and secondary are just so vastly different and how you would balance that. That's a good question. Um, as for the first, we are often working with brands that need a strategy refresh. And so oftentimes what you'll see, even if you scroll back through brand um, social feeds, content will start to change over time. And that's probably when they sat and had a refresh internally. So it's okay to evolve your content and sort of implement some of these things in real time. I will say that with any big shift in creative, that could be jarring for your audience. So you might start to see followers drop off, but that's okay if the followers that you have aren't who you want to be reaching. And ultimately what you'd want to be doing is when implementing this new strategy, you'd be pulling in those individuals that you are looking to reach. And so you can kind of, um, one thing that we often do is, is do a slow roll. So you're not going so, um, so hot and cold with the content from it being one style to the next day being another type. And I would say if you have two drastically different types of uh, target audiences, definitely think about the platforms that you're trying to reach them on. And also if they both ladder up into your business or brand goals, make sure that they're both definitely targets that you wanna be reaching um, and sort of take an assessment in real time. Yeah, I'll just add on to that first answer a little bit. I think um, when we're thinking about social media, it's important to kind of always be evolving. So you may not have big shifts in your social strategy, you know, every few months, but when things culturally hit like COVID, for example, we, ha we saw almost all of the brands that we work with shift their social strategy. And it's just small tweaks here and there too. I think it's about listening to what 
consumers are going through and understanding their behaviors and learning how you as a small business or as a brand or even as a creator can kind of shift your messaging and the content that you're putting out to better reach them in kind of this time and what they're going through. Any other questions before we hop to the next section? Yes, if you're a new business on Instagram and you're just getting started and so you don't really have a lot of followers, um, is, it, is it really important to include the hashtags? How, how can we um, use our, our business strategy on Instagram to kind of show up in spaces to, to build this audience? Yeah, you nailed it exactly right. I think first and foremost, promoting it to your networks, of course, if you have a new channel, um, forwarding it to all of everyone you know, basically. And then yes, exactly right. Um, having a strong hashtag strategy. So finding hashtags that relate to your business that are widely used will help you boost your reach on your posts and then in turn your channel as well. And we do touch on some additional tactics, like um, if you have the funds to do so, using um, low budget paid media opportunities on platforms, but also thinking about building community. And there's, um, there's a lot of tactics that you can take to engage with others on the platform to help draw them into your profile to hopefully follow you. Awesome. So jumping into the third step of all of this, so once you've figured out your audience, you've learned about them a little bit, and you've identified your competitive positioning, it's really important to develop your tone, or what I like to call your digital persona. So this is really the personality that comes to life through both your written voice, so the captions on your posts, and also the creative posts, so photos and videos and Instagram stories. Figuring out a tone and sticking with it can really help give your small business and its online presence a human touch, which as Karan mentioned at the top is super important and something that we at Full Screen love to do and pride ourselves on doing. And with that, it makes it easier to build relationships with customers to make your business more memorable and recognizable. And of course, as we talked about a moment ago, to have you stand out against your competitors. So how do we do that? Um, the next slide here is the four steps to finding a tone of voice. I think, there we go, perfect. Um, so the first one being, um, you wanna hone in on your business persona as a whole. So what I like to do is, if your business were a person, how would you describe it? Are you friendly and neighborly? Are you sassy and sharp? Are you a person that you wanna get trapped in an elevator with because you have so many great stories? So. The first key is to write that down and to figure out what your business persona is in one sentence, like we kind of talked about. Um, secondly, you want to take into account how your target audience speaks and then let that inspire you. So you want to look at things like, are their sentences long and flowy or are they short and sweet? Are they using slang and emojis or are they more formal and they use proper punctuation and grammar. So once you figure that out, mimicking some of the ways that they speak can help you seem more relatable and also help you to form a stronger bond with your audience in the long run. The third one, you want to create a social tone of voice manifesto or guidelines. So think about the messages that you want your audience to take away from your communication. Um, one example I like to use as is Wendy's. I don't know if you guys follow Wendy's on Twitter, but they're roasting people left and right. They're hilarious. Um, and Wendy's considers their tone to be both confident and sassy, um, which kind of brings me to another point that isn't on this slide, but I think is important to think about. And I think Ebony had brought this up earlier, which is your tone can play out differently on various platforms and with different audiences. So for example, if you know you have a younger audience on Twitter, um, you may think of Twitter as a place where you talk to your brother, whereas um, Facebook is a place where you talk to your mom. So going back to the Wendy's example, um, both are sassy, but you might just tone it down a notch um, when you're talking to your mom or are on Facebook. Um, and then finally, get specific. So something we like to do with small businesses and with brands is to create a we are and a we are not chart or a do or do not chart, which we can see on the next slide with our wonderful donut example. So for the donut shop, they really wanna be playful and sprinkle in some humor, but they also realize they're not a comedian. They aren't telling jokes. They're just adding a little bit of fun into their copy. 
they want to indulge in emojis because this is something they see their millennial audience doing. But as a business, they want to make sure that they aren't overusing slang um, or coming across as too juvenile. And then finally, um, they are a donut shop after all. So they want to be really sweet, um, use sweet language, but they don't want to be saccharine or overly sweet. They don't want to come across as kind of a Hallmark card. They still want to be fun. <laughs> So that was tone. Do you guys have any questions on developing your tone of voice or your digital persona? Do you have any wording that can make you sound like a lot less robotic, like any examples? Yeah, I would say when you're writing copy, think about it as a conversation. So read the sentence out loud and say, is this something I would say to my friend or to if your audience is millennials, a millennial or a mom and do it that way. A lot of times we, you know, read things on the computer and you can't really hear how it would sound out loud. So my trick is to read it out loud. And it sounds like if it sounds like you're having a conversation, then you're good to go. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. So step four, Crystal kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but Step four is really identifying a priority platform. So if you're just starting out as a small business on social and you're trying to tackle Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and figuring out TikTok, that can be really overwhelming. So um, while you definitely can be on multiple social media platforms, you really want to aim to place focus on a single platform or even two that will serve you best, especially at the beginning. Um, so there are ways to do that. Um, on our how-to slide, you want to think about which platform makes the most sense for your small business. Um, first, you want to do a few things. We've mentioned this a few times, but think about where your audience spends the most time. If they're an older audience, it might be Facebook and they're dabbling in Instagram, whereas a younger generation might be super hyped on TikTok and Instagram. And the key is to really be where your audience is. Um, secondly, you also want to think about the platforms that will work the hardest for your small business. So Facebook is really great for longer form video content. If you have a lot of video that tells the story of your business, or if you want to do live videos, Facebook is really great for that. It's also really great for community building and Facebook groups, Facebook groups specifically is a great avenue if you want kind of a closed community that you can have um, really intimate conversations in. And something that we will talk about in a few and Ben will talk through is how Facebook is really great for paid media because they have very strong targeting capabilities and you can really hone in on your audience, even if it is a super specific audience. Um, for Instagram, we know Instagram is a platform that's very visually appealing. It's a pretty platform. Um, it's often thought of as a highlight, a highlight reel, which I'm sure you all have heard. Um, the images are a bit more perfect in feed than you may see on a Snapchat or a TikTok, but it is a really great place for inspiration and motivation and also really great for categories like food and fashion and art um, that are more visual. Um, not to mention there's a ton that you can do on Instagram from stories to live video to IGTV. You can also sell directly from Instagram if that's something that you're interested in. Um, so great platform overall. Um, Twitter typically used by brands and small businesses to share business news, to live tweet events. And I think the biggest thing with Twitter is about jumping on trends. So kind of going back to the donut example, if National Donut Day is trending and you're a donut brand, um, hopping on that hashtag on Instagram and Twitter can help um, boost your awareness and also increase your reach. Uh, what's next? YouTube. So YouTube is typically a little bit of a heavier lift for a small business because you do want to make sure that you're keeping up a consistent posting cadence. Um, we know that the YouTube algorithm does really reward that. So um, making sure that you're creating kind of a serialized, um, serialized content. So whether that's educational product videos or behind the scenes videos, set a schedule and post as consistently as you can. Um, and then Pinterest and LinkedIn. So Pinterest, short and sweet, it's perfect for DIYs and how to's. I think the one big thing with Pinterest is making sure that you're optimizing for that platform overall. So thinking vertical pins, um, things that will be of value to people on the platform as they're using it for more kind of DIY and how to's and also inspo. 
And then LinkedIn is really great, especially if you're marketing to other businesses or other business owners, or if you're looking to recruit um, or even share any kind of industry knowledge and to be a thought leader in the space. I think one thing that isn't on here is TikTok, um, which we've been talking about a lot with brands lately um, and <laughs> just people in general. TikTok is everywhere. We're doing a ton of TikTok POVs. And I think if you are a small business that is trying to reach younger audiences and you don't quite have the capacity to do um, a serialized YouTube series, TikTok might be a fun way to dip your toe into video and to get your name out there. So going back to the donut shop, um, the priority platforms that we identified for Once Upon a Donut was first and foremost, Instagram. So their target audience is millennials. We know millennials spend a ton of time on Instagram. It's also the perfect platform to show off their beautiful donuts, as you can see on the right. Um, Facebook is a secondary where they'll, where they'll post promotions and also use it for paid media to find new audiences. And then Pinterest, they'll occasionally make recipe pins and then link back to their website for more site traffic and awareness. Any questions on platforms? I have a question, but it's more about tone. Okay. okay. So my question is kind of, um, I'm with, with my business, I do a few different things. I sell product, but I also educate. And I wonder if it's getting like cluttered. It's like, mm -hmm. I, I guess I'm trying to make sure that it's, um, it's communicated clearly because sometimes I even look at my own Instagram page and I'm like, well, what am I doing? Am I educating or am I selling things? So how, how can I guess clean it up or how would one, um, avoid being cluttered yeah a question before i answer are you educating on the products that you're selling or are they separate no well i'm a sex therapist but i also sell lingerie so it's like i mix okay stuff in i would say identify what your primary goal of your social handle is so are you using social to drive more sales if so i would maybe heavy up on the selling portion and then keep the educational stuff maybe to another platform. Um, but, or if you wanted to flip flop it, think about the platforms that will work best for education. So maybe you're taking education to Instagram stories where you can produce videos on the fly and you can save them into your highlight, whereas your feed would mainly be focused on selling. I think if you, I, maybe you mentioned Instagram. I don't know if I just threw Instagram out there, but, um, but that would be a great way to do it on Instagram if that's where you prim primarily are. Yeah, I would okay. say even with um, recent brands that we work with that are looking to be more of a resource to consumers, especially during COVID, to offer um, educational things, they are looking to placements. Instagram is their prim primary platform, so they're, like Ashley mentioned, looking to stories to educate and in feed to do more of the selling. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Great. Um, I have a question. Is there a right or wrong way to organize your content? Because I see some entrepreneurs on their business pages. What they'll do is like they'll have some things that they're selling, and then um they might have a picture of themselves wearing a product or like quotes. Is that like a? Do you think that's a professional way of like conducting content or no? I think we actually kind of get to this in the next few slides. I think it sounds like what they're doing is coming up with content pillars. So. It'll be quotes about what they're selling, the products, and then also kind of like consumer testimonials. And that's basically three different ways to tell your story. So I think, yes, to me, that sounds like a really great strategy. Um, and I think we can dive into it a little bit deeper in the next few slides, kind of teed that up nicely. Awesome. So like I mentioned, um, and that was a great lead in, thank you. Um, once you've figured out your key platforms, it's time to start creating content. So having strong social content can help customers understand how you can stand out against competitors. It can provide them value and at the core, it's a really great way to connect. So when you start to think about creating content, this is a little bit of the how-to. Um, again, you wanna keep your competitive positioning top of mind. So how does this content showcase the unique space your business holds in the community? 
if you want to go to the next slide. Thank you. Um, you also want to align your content plans with your social goals and basically be realistic in what you can maintain. So what types of content can your business put out? Is it quotes? Is it product posts? Can you take um, pictures of yourself using your product if that's something that you're selling? Um, and then think about how does that type of content reach your goals? So in that example, quotes might be a way to show what your brand stands for, whereas the product is showcasing you know, how it works in the day-to-day -day life. Um, and then finally, you want to translate, like I mentioned, your business values and goals into content pillars. So content pillars are a way that we kind of organize and inspire additional content. So you'll want to take in, or you'll want to create pillars that take into account your goals, your products, and your capabilities. So for example, if you're a grocery business that prides itself on selling really fresh items, your pillars might be new product highlights that you bring into the store or recipe roundup um, where you create recipes using the product seen in your store. You might even have one that's as seen in store and it's funny moments that happened or even like an overheard in XYZ, your business. Um, so thinking of those three as content pillars will really help inspire new content and create things that can kind of be, like you mentioned, a little bit more organized. So before we get into how this comes to life for the donut shop, I just want to call out again that we do have some templates for creating content in the send through that we will send after this. Um, everything from Instagram stories to in feed posts. So if you're looking for a place to start out, um, you can leverage those. Um, but for the donut shop, uh, there were three content pillars that we came up with. So. The first one, your food baby. Um, we know that this company is dedicated to personalization, so it really is a highlight reel of all the special donuts that the business made through Instagram in feed posts. You could also use it on Facebook albums if that is your primary platform, which we know it's the secondary for the donut shop. The second one, the making of. So this is more of a behind the scenes pillar, um, showcasing making the donuts or even the people behind the company coming to life through stories and Facebook Live, um, Facebook video even. And then the third one, all about you. So we know that this donut shop really cares about their customers and they wanna highlight them on social, make it really human and personalized. And they'll showcase customers and their favorite donuts. They'll give them recipes and tips through Facebook posts and Instagram in feed posts and also in stories. Great. Any questions before we move to step six? Yes, I have another question. Um, yeah. So for my business, I have a clothing line and I had an issue as far as like my, um, my presentation. Like I know you went over the pillars and everything, but um, whenever customers wear my products, like not to sound rude, but they send the most like shot out busted looking pictures. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> I don't want to step on any clothes and not post it, but it's either the pictures are really like low, low quality or it's like, the, it's like the picture shows more their face than like the logo. Right. And it's like, what do you think is a professional way to go about that to fix my business presentation? Yeah, we have that um, issue with a few of our brands as well. And I think the big thing is highlighting the posts that you get that are really great. So if you get a ton of really great UGC that are sent in, show them and show them like this is the type of content that I'm looking for. Um, I think there are still ways to engage with the other types of content, even if you might not be reposting them or things like that. You could use kind of a community management approach where you can like, you can comment, but maybe you're not going to be reposting if the image kind of doesn't um, match up to your standards. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So great. This kind of actually is a great question ties into this next section. You guys are really just setting this up for me. Thank you. Um, so we know one of the biggest benefits of social media is the ability to foster community with your customers and fans. And you can really do that through three ways, creatively, conversationally, and tacti tactically. So on the next slide, we'll start with creatively. You can do this through posts and feeds. So whether you're posting to one platform or three platforms, try to understand the consumer's state of mind and their experience and aim to create content that's really meaningful for them in that moment. Um, also, we kind of just touched on this, but look to UGC, which is user generated content or content that your customers are posting. 
um, as a way to add value to your social feeds while also building connections with your community. So reposting what they're posting or even liking and commenting, like I mentioned. Um, you can encourage on Instagram or on Facebook, encourage customers to tag your business when posting for the potential to be shared on your page. So this can be in your Instagram bio, your Twitter bio, even in your Facebook bio as well. Um, and then finally, stories on both Instagram and Facebook are a way to post less produced content. So while in feed posts are a little bit more polished stories, you can be a little bit more flexible and post things like behind the scenes content and quick how to's and they don't have to be super produ um, produced or polished. The second way to encourage is through conversation. So um, we know that social is a place that more and more customers are turning to for customer service. So making sure that if you do have a social platform for your business to monitor for questions and to respond in real time when possible. We typically recommend doing a sweep once a day just to see if there's any new ones. Um, the second one is community management. So you can really provide extra value to your customers by liking customer comments, by asking additional questions, by leveraging personalized responses. And of course, like I mentioned, if they are tagging you in UGC, going through and liking and commenting when you can. Um, and then the last one, through post captions and hashtags. So we never recommend engagement baiting is what we call it, but which is asking fans to like or your post. But that's a little bit more um, acceptable, which is calls to actions or questions to kind of generate conversation in the comments. Um, and then finally, there's a few other tactics that we can leverage. Facebook groups are a really great way to find and ingrace embrace groups and communities. So not only can you join as a member to a community group, so if you're a small business, the big one is Small Business Connections. But you can also start your own group to give your business advocates a place to chat and a place for your business to share news and updates and more. Um, video, we've touched on this a little bit, but is a strong way to showcase who your business is or what your business stands for and the stories that you want to tell. Um, if you don't have budget or time to do a video production, like I mentioned, use Instagram stories, use Facebook Live or Instagram Live or even TikTok um, to give customers a behind the scenes look at what makes your business tick. And then lastly, partnering with creators or even other businesses not only can help your business and drive awareness, but can also highlight your business as super trustworthy. So. Um, if you're in a smaller town, consider partnering with creators in your area to kind of create content together. So this last donut shop example here um, is how they fostered community. So once COVID hit, the donut shop started giving millennial parents donut making activities to do at home. And then they asked their followers to submit photos of those and then once they got them, they highlighted all of them on Instagram stories and called them their donut designers. So not only were they getting people talking about their brand, but also using the recipes that they provided, and then they were highlighting them um, on their social channels as well. Awesome. So the next section will be paid media. Any questions on community before we dive in? Hi, I have a question. Um, so what would be the most effective way to drive um, one audience to another? So for instance, I have a certain audience um, with like producing, et cetera, but I want to drive that audience to my, my business and my brand without saying, hey, go check out my brand. Like what are uh, maybe, um, what's the most effective way to do that? Yeah, that's a good question. I think... If there are similarities between your one group and the other, so like interests or things like that, there is, I think, a, a way to say it without sounding kind of self-promotional, <laughs> you know? So say yeah. things like, if you like this, I think you'd really like, you know, X, Y, Z, which would be your brand. So leaning into interests and behaviors, I think, would be the best bet. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, do you, before you go on, I know that there's always talks about algorithms between like Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. Um, is there any 
um, approach or best practice against that to make sure that our content is showing up in feeds? Yeah, I'll jump in here. So the way to trick the algorithm is really to have really great content. So the reason things are served up higher in the feed is because people are engaging with them. So you want to make sure kind of, it kind of ties in everything we've talked about. You want to make sure you understand your audience so that you can create really awesome content that they're likely to engage with. I would also say learning is something that we always recommend. So if one post, you know that it didn't get served to very many people, look at the, the pieces of the content. So maybe it's a video or maybe it's um, um, an image with a certain, I don't know, maybe it's a UGC that isn't as polished as you might typically post. Um, learn from that and kind of evolve your content as you go. Um, I think another thing is knowing what works on the platform. So we know Facebook loves video. So if you're going to post a live video, knowing that it'll likely reach more people if you're posting on a Facebook who does prioritize video in the algorithm. I think, uh, just sorry, I just want to add something in here. I'm sorry, I just hopped on the call. But um, the other thing is to really look at when your audience is actually online. On the, in the analytics for most of the social platforms, you can see that um, and try to build your content schedule around that and be consistent. Um, and that will really, really help the content just do well organically, which will help your long-term success within the algorithms. Um, so see when they're online and also be as timely as you can um, about updates to your business or kind of things that you're talking about that are happening locally to you because when there is any trend kind of happening and you talk about it, that will do well within those algorithms. So a couple different things to kind of balance when you're actually making a schedule. And everyone, that is uh, Garrett Woods. He is with Full Screen, and he is our uh, resident expert and guru on all social platforms. He was in another meeting, but we asked him to join us when he could so that he would be here at the end for the Q&A to get down to those really like tactical, executional, like knowledge-based um, platform questions. So thanks so much, Garrett, for joining us. Thank you, Garrett. I had a question. Um, how do you find that um, data on each platform to see, okay, millennials are this time of day or Gen Z is this time of day. Like, how do you dig into the back end? I, I, I don't know if this would be particularly back end, but how do you find that data um, for the platforms that you want to look at? That's a great question. And Ben, who's going to hop on next, will actually cover a little bit about how to access your insights on platforms. But one thing to keep in mind is that you'll want to establish a Facebook page um, in order to set up an Instagram business profile. You won't be able to view your insights on Instagram without a business profile. And in order to have a business profile, you need to have a Facebook page. Um, they like to make it nice and complicated. <laughs> uh, but it is fairly easy to go through. And in the send through, we actually have steps on how you can go about doing that. Great. Well, thank you so much, Ashley. So um, now that we have our content strategy in place, we are going to dive into how to support that with media. So each uh, platform, each social platform has a host of media tools uh, that are very user friendly. Um, very simple to use where you can have ads for your business up and running in no time. Uh, the great thing about what they offer is uh, you can work with any budget uh, because social platforms gather so much information on their users, uh, on uh, user activity. There is a lot of targeting that you can layer into your campaigns on these platforms to really hone in on your, your desired audience help build new audiences. So we talked about, you know, targeting new audiences. Um, you know, media is a great way to do that, but you can really hone in on your audiences and uh, not have to spend a ton of money to do that. So budgets are very flexible. Um, audiences are very specific. And, um, you know, the other great thing about uh, ads on social platforms is um, the content you're creating is what gets promoted. So you don't have to worry about building ads or um, you know, finding the right messaging for an ad. You're, you're simply taking the content that you're putting on your uh, profiles and, and on your social channels and boosting that to the audiences that you want to reach. So you have a ton of flexibility, you have a ton of options, and um, 
you know, you have a, a great opportunity to um, really drive results that are going to stick. So the other thing that I think is really valuable about um, using media on social platforms is uh, you can drive engagement with your channels amongst new audiences. You can um, build new audiences, actually um, uh, drive new followers to your, your content, and you can drive sales. And all these things can be measured within the platforms. We'll talk a little bit about measurement, which is going to be step eight and the final step of our, our process here. But uh, a lot of tools and a lot of um, ways to implement those strategies. So um, we'll jump ahead looking at, you know, sort of our little exercises that it relates to paid media. So uh, this is a pretty helpful guide on uh, when to use media for your, um, for your content. So if you have something specific you want to call out to your customers, specific call to action, you know, subscribe now for updates, donate here for our community. These are the kind of messages you're going to want to boost and push out to new audiences. Um, key platforms for messaging like this, Facebook, uh, YouTube, um, you know, always keep in mind, um, you know, follow your audience, go to where your audience is. Um, when you have a timely message, so flash sales, um, you know, limited supply of certain products, um, even a product launch or, you know, important updates to your service. Obviously, uh, when, you know, businesses were changing, when, you know, um, hours were changing, ways to, um, uh, you know, visit businesses, order online in the early days of COVID. This was really, really important where, you know, making sure those messages are getting out to um, the right audiences so customers knew how they could um, uh, work with you. Uh, when using paid media, when you have differentiating products or services, so when you fill a need, no one else in your community can um, promote that. And, you know, you can even create, um, you know, list, um, remarketing lists to use in the future. So um, think about Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, um, the, all the platforms, um, you know, are great places to um, promote new um, differentiating products and services. Sticking to organic reach, and this is, you know, again, organic reach is when you're, um, you know, posting your content organically. Um, evergreen content, so things that are always in stock, maybe your flagship products or your flagship services, um, you know, advice, and we talked about quotes, um, content that just can sort of live on forever and isn't timely or relevant in the moment, um, you know, doesn't necessarily need to be promoted with media. Um, the, the effects you want of, you know, building audiences, driving sales, driving new customers uh, may not be the same with this type of content. Um, when you're consistently posting content, um, you know, advertising can be a supplement to that. So it's bringing new customers to the door um, and, and you don't really need to focus on sort of your your day-to-day -day ongoing content with um, a paid media strategy. Uh, next, we're going to look at targeting tactics. So the great thing about using media as a tool to bring new customers to your business is there are a wide variety of targeting tactics you can use. So really think about what you are. Are you a brick and mortar business? Are you an online e-commerce business? Um, you know, think about that that audience you've um, built out. Um, who they are, um, you know, all the sort of steps we've taken has gotten you to the point where you can now activate that with media. So, um, you know, um, proximity, when you think about location, you know, are you only targeting people in a, in, a, um, in a region, in a city, in a community in that city, or even a zip code? You know, you can get really, really specific um, on each platform with where people are. Um, obviously, you know, demo type targeting, gender, age, um, Lookalikes is really interesting. So um, actually creating audiences that are similar to um, your target audience. And we talked about, you know, if you're trying to reach millennials or you're trying to reach a, a very specific audience, um, the platforms have um, ad tools that help you actually build a bigger audience based on who you're looking for. And then, um, you know, we talk about audience size. I think, um, you know, the key with advertising um, your business on social media is, you don't need to reach everybody. Um, you need to reach the right people. And the tools are there for you to do that. Uh, it's not about you know, the most people to get in front of, but getting in front of the most um, people within the audience you're trying to hit 
um, that could be very, very specific. You know, you might have a very particular audience in mind in a very local area, particularly if you're a store that people come into or you're offering a very, um, you know, unique and specific service. So um, only reaching those uh, customers allows you to be efficient with your budget and actually get the results that you're looking for in terms of um, customer engagement or, you know, new business. Um, another thing to keep in mind uh, when, um, you know, using tactics to launch your paid media um, is, uh, was on the slide, but it's actually you can target your competitors and, and followers of your competitors. So um, if, if you either have competitors in market or aspirational competitors, um, it could be a national uh, brand that is similar to your brand or, you know, it's, like I said, competitors you can find those pages and actually target their followers and customers and try to bring them over to your business, which is a really um, impactful tactic to use. So looking ahead at some um, messaging and creative tips, um, we like to give you some thought starters and ideas. Um, you know, mobile first creative, a lot of people are using social media on their phones. Um, so keeping in mind, you know, what that mobile experience is gonna be. Um, you know, whether it's vertical video um, or, you know, square video, which can work in, in any format. Um, thinking about less is more, you know, avoiding too much text. Um, instead, you know, think about um, uh, keeping text short, clear and concise, so that message gets across. Uh, your CTA, your call to action, um, you know, CTA buttons are laid over uh, social media ads. So make sure you're, um, putting the right uh, call to action that matches the creative you're putting out. Um, making sure that you're putting a message out there that is encouraging people to click through. You know, what action do you want people to take after viewing your ad? Um, you know, thinking about pickup and delivery, if you're a storefront, if you're a brick and mortar, um, how can you um, evolve your, your ad messaging to meet where, um, you know, the ways your customers can engage with you, um, you know, especially during this time period. Um, and then, you know, pushing out things like, um, you know, uh, gift cards or, um, you know, ways that, um, um, Crystal mentioned this earlier, you know, ways that uh, your consumers can, can support you when maybe they can't come in and patronize your business or, um, you know, use your services right now. Um, so, you know, a lot of ways you can strategically message um, and use creative to your benefit to, um, you know, get your message across with uh, paid ads. Next, the final step of our process, step eight, and uh, we're gonna look at measurement. So any business owner is gonna wanna know, um, how can we measure all this effort on social media? You know, we've thought, our, we've thought through our content, we've thought through when and where we're gonna post it, we've thought through how we're gonna promote it. Um, you know, how can you measure that at the end of the day? And the great thing is you can measure social media in an endless variety of ways. Um, you know, Measuring what you're doing with your content, uh, with your media, with your advertising um, is important so that you can track how your content's performing uh, in order to optimize. So improve what you're doing, whether it's the, the message of your content when it's being posted, what you're promoting and what you're boosting with ads. Um, understanding what your um, followers, fans, customers actually connect and interact with. And then measuring um, media success. So, um, you know, how is media actually affecting uh, the results of uh, your social strategy? So our little exercise here is social, social metric identification. So trying to think about what is most important to you as you put your strategy in place. Um, this is almost like setting goals or objectives for your strategy. Um, this is um, thinking about um, a variety of um, goals we can look at, um, growing customer base and awareness, increasing consideration, driving traffic and conversion. How can we actually measure what um, this effort we're doing? So if your goal is growing your customer base and awareness, um, look at your reach, the amount of unique people who saw your post. Um, look at impressions. This is just the amount of times your posts are seen. How does that, how do those numbers change based on what you're posting? And, um, you know, there's a lot, some comments earlier about the algorithm, you know, the algorithm is going to pick and choose which content is going to get to the widest audience. So which of your content, which of your content pillars is actually resonating? We can measure this pretty closely. Um, video views, um, and then a breakdown of demographics. So 
um, you know, by content, you know, who is seeing it, who is seeing that content, um, and, you know, back to, um, you know, how are they engaging with it. If your goal is increasing consideration, you can look at a wide variety of engagements. So these are, you know, all the numbers that we see on social media, likes, comments, shares, um, even clicks. Um, on the back end, you know, we can see all, all this data and really easy to understand um, charts and graphs. Um, these are interactions that cons consumers are taking with, with your posts. Um, what's the engagement rate? So that's essentially engagement divided by impressions. Um, easy, to, to, easy to understand metric to track. And then sentiment. So this would be the emotional response to your content, um, positive, negative, or neutral. Uh, when you're looking at comments, you can gain understanding of sentiment on specific posts and understand um, how uh, the content you're creating, uh, how consumers are responding to that. We always want to drive sales at the end of the day. So if our goal is around driving traffic and then conversion into sales, um, looking at um, how many people are clicking on links. So when you're putting specific product links and posts or um, using uh, buy now messaging uh, and CTAs in your um, ads. Um, how are people um, clicking on that and actually driving uh, incremental business um, revenue to your business? Uh, so looking at, um, I mentioned, you know, each platform has great tools to use to measure uh, everything that's happening. What Facebook has insights, uh, YouTube analytics, Twitter analytics, Pinterest analytics, Instagram analytics. Um, tons of graphs, charts, data that can be sliced and diced based on whatever you um, want to see. And, um, you know, as, a, as, as um, Crystal mentioned earlier, um, set up your pages. You'll have access to these um, platforms or, or these tools within the platforms. And again, really, really detailed look at, um, you know, what your content and what your um, content strategy is delivering in terms of results. So as we come up on the end here, looking at uh, measurement best practices, um, you know, aim to do at least a weekly check-in on how your content performed over the course of the week, including which posts perform well and which posts struggle. There's a lot to learn there. Start by tracking how your content on each individual social platform is performing week over week. Um, as you're measuring for longer periods of time, start looking at month over month. Um, Looking across, uh, step three, prioritizing the platform your audience spends the most time on. Um, as you're diving deeper into your social strategy, you're gonna learn it's time consuming. You're gonna learn um, each platform requires quite a bit of diligence. So um, spend the time where you're getting the best results. Um, this is obviously key to continuing to deliver success. Um, you know, learning from your successful posts. So as we dive into um, the metrics and the analytics, you know, what's resonating and, you know, where can you actually grow your strategy? And always be open to shifting your strategy, whether it's your media strategy, whether it's your content strategy. Social is very agile. Um, you can continually shift strategy platform to platform, um, post to post even, and um, learn from what you're seeing and, and you know, test and, and take the results and try new things. Um, a lot of um, opportunity there. And wrapping up with uh, Once Upon a Donut Shop. So, um, you know, they've been posting content a few months on Instagram. Um, they dug into what the analytics and they learned that photos of donuts were receiving 40% more engagements that um, of photos that didn't have any donuts in them at all. So we talked about Instagram, incredibly visual platform, seeing pictures of those delicious donuts is driving the engagement they're looking for. Um, they noticed when adding calls to action to copy on their photos, um, on those photos, they got 25% more comments than other posts. So it's actually driving additional engagement, which is what you want to elevate your, your content in um, uh, the content stream. Because of this, they launched a new weekly voting photo series where their followers get to vote and pick on next week's featured donut in the shop. So, that's going to drive even further engagement. They saw it was driving results. They iterated, learned, and actually are now driving further engagement from, um, from what they're doing. So um, definitely um, you know, a great example of how to ultimately measure what you're doing with your strategy. Um, and with that said, I'll pause. I realize um, I didn't pause for questions after the media section, so I'd be happy to take questions on uh, media strategy or um, you know, how to measure and analyze um, the results. 
I got a question for the analyzation part. Um, can you provide some like insight into like what leading indicators are great to look at during the week to week session or the month to month session? You talked about kind of like weekly active users, but then like what exactly are you looking for to provide you a specific measurement during that time? Yeah, I think, uh, if, in my opinion, um, looking at engagement rate, I think is probably the easiest metric to translate results. Um, you know, typically, you know, we talked about building content pillars. So if you're building a strategy week to week where, you know, you have a cadence of content you're putting out, um, evaluating that versus the engagement rate and trying to see, you know, what's changing week to week. Um, I think that's probably the, the most concise metric uh, to analyze what's working and what isn't. Thank you for the question. All right, you guys, we have- I have um, a question, I'm sorry. Um, I just wanted to clarify. So when you're talking about using paid media, you're talking against like, we, we need to make sure that people know that their account should be business account and not, I don't, I don't know that this works against personal accounts. Can you speak to that? Yeah, so the great question, uh, this, uh, the, the um, both analytics tools and uh, ability to run media are for business accounts. So you do want to set up your, uh, your companies with business accounts um, to unlock all these tools and uh, give yourself the opportunity to run media and track everything as extensively as possible. Other questions? I do have a question. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so I, two questions. Um, when you talked about the tactics to grab followers from competitors, is that simply commenting and adding questions to their posts or is there a little something more you can do? And prior you said that FB, FB moves the needle with video um, in terms of pushing through the algorithm. What pushes, the, um, pushes through on other platforms like Instagram and LinkedIn? I'll let, uh, I'll let Garrett take these. I was gonna say, I can actually hop in for the competitor question. I think um, just going back to looking at your competitors, how their social content is performing um, and what sort of tips you can learn from with them rather than, uh, it's always a great thing to um, pull those followers over to your own business, but I would tread lightly. Um, I don't know that, commenting as a brand or a business commenting on their content may not help you in the long run um, but make sure you're appealing to them in similar ways if you're seeing that your competitors are sharing content that is doing really well and driving a lot of conversation analyze that conversation make sure you understand what sort of things um, folks are responding about and what they're interested in or, or seemingly interested in and then use and learn from that and use that information as part of your own approach with creating content and that might help draw them over. Um, additionally, you can look to the hashtags that they're using and start to share those as well. Um, it's always okay to go in, you know, as part of community management when you're building your own. Um, if you're exploring public content as a business and going in and liking a, a post that was shared with a specific hashtag, that could be a good way to sort of draw users into your profile and make it more discoverable. Sorry, I was looking for my unmute button. Yeah, I think that answers it. I would just also kind of say that you can also look at people that are mentioning your brand, um, you know, like their content. It just, you know, if I'm lo loving a brand, if they like me back, that makes me feel good. Um, and that's a good way to actually grow your following. I would actually be really careful about that though. Um, don't sit and like hundreds of people's uh, um, content out there um, because that, We've actually seen that Instagram will um, temporarily um, make you not be like it disable you from engaging on any content for a couple of days because they see that as um, spam. Um, so you really can't ab abuse the platforms in that sense. But those are things that you can do every couple of days um, to kind of grow your audience um, and just, you know, create it, make your fans feel good. Um, yeah. I have a question on. Do you guys know any like funding sources for businesses? Am I off? There's a, that, oh. you, uh, you can take it. You can take it. I know that there's actually a couple happening right now from the platforms directly. LinkedIn actually 
just want to call this out. If you do want to start running ads, you get a hundred dollar credit off the bat. Um, there's a bunch of terms and conditions within that, but they will actually give you a hundred dollar credit um, on that platform to start running your ad business. I think there's a couple other ones out there on some other platforms. Facebook launched one at the start of COVID, specifically for small businesses. It was quickly um, depleted. Um, they they worked with they put uh, a, an amount of money aside for small businesses to um, run advertising on their campaign, and I believe they had a grant program as well. But it's not currently active. Unfortunately, I don't think there's an easy answer to that question. I think you have to stay constantly, stay on top of the news, stay on top of things. Um, as they roll out, because to Ben's point, they are quickly depleted. I know that just a few weeks back, uh, YouTube even announced, right, a hundred million dollar fund for black creators in particular. So then it's saying, does that align with me? Who in my network do I start to reach out to? If that's something, I guess, that you're looking for, um, that you start to make the case of why you're best positioned. But just constantly looking, constantly reaching out, because it just, it changes often. Ben, you said you. in your answer a moment ago, you were saying evaluate engagement rate versus something, and I missed the other side of that. When he asked about how to evaluate what is working, you said evaluate engagement rate versus something, I missed that, the other I side. Think, yeah, so I think I was referring just, you know, versus your content strategy. So, you know, if you've laid out, you know, your content pillars and week over week, you're, you know, adhering to, you know, different um, uh, pillars of content you're posting, you know, comparing results week over week is a great way to measure like what's resonating. Uh, that, that was the example I gave. What Thank other specific questions do we have out there? Like we said, there's a follow through, a send through that we will um, give you all that goes deeper into what we've talked about today. But while you have us, we would love to uh, talk through any specific questions that you all have. Can you go further into what lookalikes are? You had mentioned that in the previous slide and I wanted to ask you like- Yeah, so, so some of the, the platform's advertising tools give you tools to actually um, find potential customers um, based on either your current audience or, you know, who is engaging with your content. So what it's doing is building an advertising audience um, based on, you know, those types of parameters. So it's saying, you know, this type of audience follows your page with your content. Um, we're going to find other people on the platform that are similar to that audience and push your ads out to them because um, as you know, they align closely with who, who's already following your page or engaging, depending on, you know, the, the parameters you set up. I have a question um, regarding paid versus organic. Mm -hmm. So as a brand new um, business, would you suggest automatically going into paid or would you suggest like trying to see organic and like what type of engagement that yields? I would say it certainly depends on your goals, you know, that you've laid out. I think needless to say, using uh, paid media on these platforms is a great way to build an audience. So certainly early on, you're just starting out. Part of your goal is to build a community and build an audience. Um, there are um, a lot of tools that will help you do that um, with the media tools that these platforms offer. So um, definitely, um, you know, dive in sooner than later and, you know, track the results. You'll see, you know, the incremental audience growth from that's coming from your, um, your ads, and you'll be able to determine whether that's, you know, worth it to you if you're growing at the pace you want. And you can also measure, you know, which where is your audience coming from uh, the ads you're running, or are they finding your page in different ways. So, um, you know, you'll be able to um, sort of gauge the effectiveness of your campaigns and, and determine from there, um, you know, what the right mix is. I would also if you do start off solely organic, a lot of times we like to think of organic as kind of like a testing ground for paid. So seeing the types of posts that are working with your audience already before you put money behind some of your content could also be a smart way to kind of just learn about the audience that you're already reaching before you try to reach out to new audiences as well. I have a question. Um, I okay, I have a question. 
Um, if I, my name is Janae Smith and I am a talent and a thing that I struggle with is in knowing who to really target in that my client could be individual audience members or it could be corporations. And so is it better to really seek growing a following because if I have a larger following, then corporations may say, hey, we can hire her because she has all of these people. Or do I really uh, target the corporations first and knowing that I may have a smaller following, but it's more targeting my long-term larger uh, client pool? And is Garrett still on? If yeah, you wanna... I, can, I can take that one. I think um, a good platform to look into specifically for you is um, LinkedIn um, and actually running some ads there uh, because especially for a, like a, a B2B audience if you want to appeal to um, that audience in certain ways, it's a really, really great way to actually find, um, you know, people that will, you know, you can work with actually. Another thing to consider too is, um, messenger ads that's actually sending an ad directly into someone's inbox um those are way underutilized but um especially on linkedin are pretty effective because you're having a direct conversation with someone um that might be related to you know your industry or the work that you've done i don't know if you guys touched on this but can you touch on influencer marketing like even just a, a broad overview of what do you guys think about it or um, how a company could utilize that? Yeah, the whole other hour long conversation. <laughs> That's We're not like, where we have, we have to schedule a part two. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I mean, for a lot of what we went through today, while there are differences, of course, I think the same can be said for talent using these principles and these tactics. If you were to think about yourself as a brand or your talent as a business, obviously, again, like certain things won't apply, um, but you would essentially go through a lot of those same steps. And to what Garrett mentioned, yes, there, there is a lot that can be said <laughs> about the do's and don'ts of um, how to be an influencer and how to work with brands on that. Um, but I do want to add, and I want to tie that question to, and I believe the woman's name was Janice, and forgive me if I said it wrong, to Janice's question previously. Um, I think, you know, it, in this uh, environment that we're in, we're seeing a lot of companies become personified. And you also have to remember that there are human beings that work at these companies that are making these decisions. So when you're saying, should I focus on reaching the company or focus on reaching individuals, remember that at the end of the day, it's always individuals that you're reaching. There's going to be someone at the company that is going to have seen you somewhere or heard someone talk about you somewhere and is going to go into a meeting and advocate for you. And a lot of times they will be willing to put their neck on the line and advocate for you if they know that you are hitting the sweet spot of your audience precisely. So I think we are seeing engagement be a lot more, um, have a lot more weight than just broad reach, right? If you have 5 million followers, but you don't really have any likes, follows, and engagement, people are kind of questioning how you got the followers or if the people that have followed you for whatever reason, like what you're offering. So engagement, I think, is the name of the game right now. So be really, be really great at what you're good at. <laughs> I, I had a, oh. I, oh, you could go ahead. Uh -huh. oh, thank you. Um, I had a question in terms of, um, like, basically, like, paid media. So. My biggest thing is like now I'm trying to wrap my mind around, you know, because of the fact of the matter is one of uh, my social medias for my business, you know, it got hacked or whatever the case may be. So now I'm trying to work to rebuild that brand all over again and, you know, go to those, um, those friends and families and constantly push them, but also do my own thing. So when starting up brand new with a uh, paid media, you know, should that be like a wait till I gain a following or wait till I have a lot more products and content for me to use the paid media? Or if if so, 
So what should be my marketing now to push the game that traction, especially traction enough that they'll go to my website to buy the product? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, probably investing some time in the content strategy and actually building up some content is uh, a good approach to, and it sounds like if you're, if you're rebuilding everything from scratch, would be the right approach before launching into media. I mean, we, we talked about, you know, using media to build an audience. So obviously if that's your goal, it's a very powerful tool to do that. But you wanna make sure that if you are bringing people to your channels that you do have a content base there. So I would um, spend a bit, time, a bit of time getting the content back up and running before um, you know, getting media running. Thank you, everyone. So in the uh, send through that we're going to give to Joy to give to everyone, like I said, there are useful templates for social. Uh, we go just a bit deeper in all of these areas. We knew we would not have time to go through the entire deck on this call already. You guys have given us 90 minutes of your time, and we're so appreciative of that. Um, but we hope that you found it useful, and we hope that you find the send through even more useful. Um, and we hope that you embark on that journey of just getting really more connected with your audience. Because if you do the hard work up front, you know, it may feel like it's a heavy lift and taking a while, but then you will see it one fine day start to take off. Yes. And I want to say thank you all for um, signing up um, through Culture Creators. And thank you again, Full Screen, for providing this information that is so critical um, as we build our businesses, and is, especially in this new pandemic area area of being home but we know now that you know that's the way to reach consumers and so storytelling through social media um is is super critical for all brands across the board so i want to wish everyone good luck with um your businesses and we will plan to do more with full screen but thank you guys thank you all for joining thanks everyone thanks, thanks for having us. have a great weekend Bye. thank you all so much